This is Jets FM on EOFN as we continue to preview the Jets 2021 season with episode five, the wide receivers. New wide receivers coach and former Dallas Cowboys standout, Miles Austin, will coach the unit ranging from 21 to 28 years of age and led by the Jets' biggest off-season signing and free agency on the offensive side, Corey Davis. The former Titan was the fifth overall selection in the 2017 NFL Draft due to his elite body control, exceptional route running, and rare instincts, all which made up for his lack of elite top-end speed. Don't forget, Davis was the all-time leader in the country in career receiving yards with 5,285 when he left Western Michigan. Davis was productive in 2018, but really broke out last year in just 14 games with 65 receptions, 984 yards receiving, and five touchdowns thanks to a robust 15.1 average per catch and a career-high 70.7 catch percentage. Don't look for Davis to have many problems picking up the offense since it's very similar to the one that he ran in Tennessee under offensive coordinator Arthur Smith, who's now the head coach with Atlanta. In 2020, Davis ran 535 of 751 snaps out wide, meanwhile adding 176 in the slot. Our number two wide receiver is going to be Denzel Mims. And besides needing a new headshot for the team, Mims has got to get healthier, no question. Uh, hamstring injuries uh, prevented him from playing until week seven as a rookie last season. And uh, he was robbed of the offseason program that normal rookies uh, get to enjoy. Uh, that includes additional reps that he lost as well. So Denzel Mims our number two wide receiver. Mims ran the third fastest 40 at the combine after a highly productive three-year career at Baylor, averaging 60 receptions, 967 yards receiving, with an excellent 16.1 average and nine touchdowns. In 2019 alone, 45 of his 66 receptions went for 10-plus yards, and 19 of 66 went for 20-plus yards. Denzel Mims has a good catch radius, soft hands, and deceptive speed with an innate ability to turn a short pass into a long game. And don't be fooled by what took place last year. The benefit of a full off-season program will bring an additional amount of reps and a better understanding of the game. And that's when we'll see the real Denzel Mims. And now we get to Jamison Crowder, the New York Jets' number one receiver the past two seasons. If he remains with the Jets in 2021, I think we'll slide in right around here, number three and maybe even number four. And that's actually a good thing for the New York Jets. It's just not good when a player like Crowder, a good player, don't get me wrong, good, solid player, but it's just a completely different type of of talent it takes to be a true number one and that's what a Corey Davis that's what even a Denzel Mims is going to be able to bring to the New York Jets and the Jets are going to be better for it if Davis is their number one like he's supposed to be Mims was not drafted to be anything less than a one or a two and that's where Crowder slides right in here now the Jets didn't expect Elijah Moore to be there so that changes a lot and that's why it's going to be interesting to find out whether or not Crowder is still here I actually don't think he's going to be I think at some point Crowder will be traded before the trade deadline maybe even before the season but we'll get on with that a little bit later on Crowder led the team in 2019 with a career high 122 targets a career high 78 receptions 833 yards and six touchdowns he again led the team in 2020 with 89 targets 59 receptions, 699 receiving yards, and six touchdowns, even though he missed four games with hamstring and groin injuries. Crowder is the quintessential NFL slot receiver, totaling 436 
of his 593 snaps in 2020 from the slot. The signing of Keelan Cole might have just as much effect on whether Jamison Crowder gets traded than the acquisition of Elijah Moore. Cole played three years at Division II Kentucky Wesleyan and put up monster numbers, including 205 receptions, 4,303 receiving yards, and 53 touchdowns in 32 games while averaging 21 yards per catch. Cole immediately made a mark as an undrafted rookie in 2017 with Jacksonville, recording 42 receptions with a 17.8 average. His 748 receiving yards led the Jags during their AFC Championship game run. He then set career highs in receptions and touchdowns in 2020 and has never missed a game during his four pro seasons. Cole was also the Jags' top punt returner last season that included an NFL best 91-yard score for 2020, even though he never returned punts before last season and has just eight career kick returns. Keelan Cole was an excellent veteran signing by Joe Douglas and the Jets. And most important, I think, which is going to really be beneficial to the Jets is going to be the fact that Cole is going to be able to bring his veteran presence into this locker room. It's a mostly young group. And, you know, he's going to be one of the elder statesmen, uh, believe it or not. And I think that's going to be, and, and especially because of his makeup. You know, he's got a great personality. Uh, he, he, you know, the players are going to gravitate to him, uh, these young players. And I think that's going to be really, really good. Especially when you got Corey Davis, who's also going to be kind of like a veteran. And, and I'm, I'm moving Jamison Crowder, obviously, out of here because I don't think he's going to be around. Um, but he's, he's still talking about a guy that will help, say, a Corey Davis not have to worry about being the leader. I mean, he's got a lot of pressure. He's in New York. He's making a lot of money. Uh, I think it's just worry about yourself. Not saying he's not going to help the kids. But I think that's Keelan Cole's main job, not Corey Davis. Corey Davis needs to produce more than anything. Keelan Cole needs to produce, but I think he's also there to help mentor the kids. And you know what? The change of scenery the different coaching staff, the scheme, whatever you want to call it, might just unleash something in Keelan Cole. Might. Because one of the things that Cole, because you might look at it and you go, wait a second, everything you're saying, it, it sounds like this guy's like, like a really good receiver and, 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 a, and a special player. The reason he's not is he's had 14 career drops in 193 targets. And that's, that's you know, that's up there. And and that's and especially when you make those drops. So he needs to he needs to definitely improve in that area, especially in New York. What you don't want to do is have drops in New York. But if the Jets feel comfortable with Keelan Cole because of his ability in the slot, and we're going to get to Elijah Moore next and his ability in the slot, and there's going to be other players that are going to be able to play in the slot. They're going to be able to, we talked about this with the running backs. They're going to be able to line up the running backs in a slot from time to time. It's going to open the door for the Jets. And I believe because of the fact when they renegotiated Jameis and Crowder's contract, they're only going to lose like a million bucks of dead cap space if they trade Crowder. So that's nothing. And I think that's definitely part of the reason that they restructured his contract. Definitely one of the main reasons. So if Crowder goes, which I believe is going to happen, you know, my, my, my bet is, my Vegas bet is that he will not be here for week one. I will hedge my bet just in case that he's traded by the trade deadline. So I'm going to be very, very surprised. And I think it's going to be a bad thing for the team if he's still around past the deadline. I just do. I think to me, that means Keelan Cole hasn't given them enough of uh, confidence that hey, we can count on him. Elijah Moore as well, maybe even more so because he's a rookie. I want the Jets staff to feel that much more comfortable in Cole and Moore and everything else that they're doing during the first several weeks of camp and maybe even a preseason game or two and go, okay, I think we're going to be okay here without Crowder. And I think uh, and that'll be a good thing for the New York Jets because they have the depth in this room, and we're going to talk more about that coming up next when we talk about Elijah Moore. Yes, Elijah Moore, who had no such drop issues at Ole Miss 
after leading the nation last season with 1,193 yards in just eight games while doing it all against SEC comp. He also led the nation for wide receivers in Yak with 446. There appears to be no limit as to what Elijah Moore is capable of doing at the next level. He works hard, puts in the time, and already seems to have a good understanding of playing X, Z, and F receiver. The Jets have also been giving him reps in the kick return game because they are trying to do whatever they can to get the ball in his electrifying hands. The more ways they can find a way to do it, the more ways they feel that the kid can produce and the Jets can be successful for it. This is going to be a lot of fun following the career of Elijah Moore with the New York Jets. The Jets are going to keep either six or seven wide receivers on their roster. And a lot of it is going to depend on what they do with Jamison Crowder. So that means there's going to be one or two spots left. And someone like Braxton Berrios might have a leg up on that final spot. Berrios has participated in all 32 games in two years with the Jets. Was the NFL's seventh-ranked punt returner in 2019 and did a good job filling in for the injured Crowder from the slot with 37 receptions and three touchdowns in 2020. And that's why I believe he should be the leading contender for the number six spot. Vincent Smith cannot be the forgotten man here either. He was limited to just 50 snaps last season to abdomen and groin injuries. Smith showed promise in 2019, playing 13 games with 17 receptions, 225 receiving yards, 52 rush yards, and a touchdown. He also led the team with a 29.9 kick return average on 10 returns. Smith was a D2 performer who ran a 4-3-40 on his pro day and just needs some developmental time. Lawrence Cager is next on our list after a promising offseason in 2020. The college free agent was limited to just two games, two receptions, 39 snaps due to hamstring and knee injuries. In college, Cager led Miami in 2018 with six touchdowns and a 17.8 yards per catch average before transferring to Georgia in 2019 playing nine games, making 33 receptions, and scoring four times. Yet another Division II standout makes our list. Matt Cole from McKendry University. Cole was a college free agent signed by Miami. Never played, was waived, picked up by the 49ers, and played just one game. Cole started 26 games in college with 93 career receptions, 17 touchdowns, and a 17.4 average. He ran a 4-4-40 at Northwestern's Pro Day and will not only return kicks on special teams, but will also provide good kick coverage as well. Jeff Smith is a poor man's Elijah Moore, but without the mental strength that makes Moore an elite prospect, and Smith a work in progress. Smith is a converted quarterback with blazing 4-3 speed who switched over to wide receiver as a sophomore at BC. He had his career game in year two with the Jets last season against Denver on prime time while snatching seven balls for 91 yards. And the final wide receiver we feel is worth mentioning is Josh Malone. The former fourth round draft pick by the Cincinnati Bengals has played in just six games for the last two years with the Jets. Malone has long arms with big hands and track star downfield speed. While in college with Tennessee, he caught 50 career passes with 11 touchdowns and a 19.4 yard average per reception. And that's the Jets wide receiver unit for 2021. And I think it is a unit to be excited about. Again, we talked about same thing with the running backs and the tight ends. There's just more depth here, and there's more talent. I mean, just take a look at the last five players that we spoke about on this report. Uh, you have Josh Malone, who has a ton of speed, and he's got the talent that you look for from a college player that you feel, if you have some time, you can coach him up, that you know might be able to have something there. But unfortunately, Malone has just not been able to overcome his weaknesses. And uh, I'm not sure whether or not he's, I, I honestly don't think he's going to last here very long. It's just too deep this season. 
I mean, I think he hung around the last two seasons because the Jets just didn't have a very deep uh, group. Um, and I just think the way it appears right now, Josh Malone's career might, uh, well, might hopefully trigger somewhere else. So then you got a Lawrence Cager. Now, Cager does not have the speed just like Berrios. These are the guys who are going to have to make it different ways. Berrios makes it because of his punt return ability, his route running, he can catch, so forth. Cager is going to have to make it because of he's, he's a big guy, he's physical, he's going to be able to go up, grab balls, things of that nature. That, that helps you tremendously in the red zone. The thing with Cager is, is we heard what kind of an offseason he was having. There was a lot of nice things said about what he was doing, but we didn't get the preseason games. That's why preseason is going to mean, and this training camp is going to mean an awful lot, even to a guy like Lawrence Cager. So we're going to get, and, and, and really this group here, whoever is going to produce, and that's why it's going to be interesting because they're going to want to develop chemistry with uh, Zach Wilson as much as possible. So you're going to see all the top guys Early on, whenever Zach's out there, you can see the top guys. So then you, you're really not going to get to the group really fighting for the roster spots up until, what, third, fourth quarter, the first game, maybe even the second game. But they'll probably be playing for their roster spots in that third game. You know, and, and, and it's different this year with, the, with one less preseason game. But you would think that's going to be the makeup is that third game is going to be like the fourth game and you're, you're going to rest guys. And then we're going to find out whether or not uh, if there's going to be one spot left at wide receiver, is somebody going to make some big plays in that third game? We'll see. And, and really that's what it can come down to. And then Vincent Smith, another guy with four, three speed, just like Cole, a division two guy who just needed developmental time, had the injuries last year. So that was a wash. So now he's had a couple of extra years. So that's why this is a big offseason, a big training camp for Vincent Smith. Can't have any more injuries because once if you do that again, then you're one of those guys. So it's very important for, first of all, stay healthy. And second of all, start making the type of plays that he was making uh, before the injury and the season last year, which, like I said, was a wash. So I, I think Vincent Smith – can definitely make this team. It might and and look, he could be the number one kick returner because he had a very good run as a kick returner that one year. And the like we talked about, they're trying Elijah Moore there, they're trying Michael Carter there. We've talked about Ty Johnson getting reps at kick return. So Vincent Smith, if he is going to make this team, might have to win that job. And if he can win that job and prove that, hey. I'm the guy you need to turn to because I can make a difference in the kick return game the way you think Braxton Berrios can make a difference in the punt return game. Now let me prove that I could also be effective offensively when called upon. And uh, I think that's how Vincent Smith is going to try to make this football team. But I give him, uh, I give him as good a chance as any of these guys uh, that are going to be fighting for the final uh, spot or two. Um, more often than not, that six and seven guy is part of your special teams which is why I could see Braxton Berrios and someone else it could be a Cole. It could be a Smith, which is going to make someone like Lawrence Cager's job that much harder. Another reason why I don't give Malone much of an opportunity, but when you take a look at Cager, when I'm looking at all the other guys that he's going up against down at the, the bottom of this unit, he's, he's going to really have to stand out offensively. Now he's also a practice squad candidate, so that could happen. No question, but Cager, it, it's about offense. That's it. And that's the thing. And, and he's not a slot guy. So, so that's going to be difficult for Cager. But I, if, if he goes out there and proves that he is an NFL wide receiver, and if you play him, he's going to produce. The Jets will find a spot for him. And, and overall, the, the thing he's got going for him, Cager, is when you're talking about Vincent Smith and, and, and Matt Cole and Braxton, even Braxton Berrios, I believe, uh, and, and these other guys are at the bottom, Jeff Smith, I believe he has the most upside offensively as a, as a true wide receiver. That's the edge Lawrence Cager has, and that is what he's going to have to bring to the table. It may not – I don't think it's going to work out for him at all Crowder stays. I just don't. Because they're going to use that final spot or two 
might be one on someone that plays special teams. Uh, but if Crowder gets traded, Cager has a legitimate chance to make the team. Look, I don't want to, I'm not here to denigrate Crowder. He is a very good football player. He's, he, when you're 5'9, you're a fourth round pick, you're, you end up being an NFL team's top wide receiver for two seasons. That says a lot. Okay. But now we're at a point, this organization, where they're trying to take big steps forward. And in order for the Jets to do that at wide receiver, that's why you go out and get a, a Corey Davis. I mean, what, what's Davis? D Davis is, at, I believe, at 6'3". And then you got Mims, who's at 6'3". And both these guys have not only got, not only do they have size, they have speed. And they're, they're when essential, number one outside receivers. Which is why I put Davis one and Mims two. Okay. The only reason I've crowded three, like I said, is because, okay, he's on the team. But I could easily see if Crowder is traded, then you got to go, all right, Keelan Cole. Is he, I did put him ahead of Moore. But the reason I put him ahead of Moore is because I'm predicting Crowder is going to get traded. I think they're going to feel more comfortable first season with Cole as this number one slot guy. And then they're going to use Moore all over the place, which might be Elijah Moore's game for his entire career which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to make him out to be some, you know, fringe type of Percy Harvin type guy that's going to, you know, light up uh, the NFL for a year. No, uh, he'll find his specific role that fits him best. Look, there are, like we talked about, they're already giving him reps at the kick return game. You think that's going to happen in a couple of years if he shows that he's actually one of the better dynamic receivers, like a Tyree Kill type guy? Of course not. They'll figure out. Maybe he'll... All, maybe maybe by 2022, he'll be the Jets' number one slot receiver. And if they want to move him around, they can. But for the first year, I just get the the, the I, just, I I feel that if Crowder goes, Cole will end up as the number one slot guy, Keelan Cole. And as long as Keelan Cole again proves that he can hold on to the ball and he could actually uh, provide the type of production that the Jets are going to count on him for if they trade Crowder. And then eventually, Elijah Moore, maybe even by the end of this season, will move into the role at number one, at, at slot. And, and, and again, this all comes down to the quarterback position. You know, it's not like the Jets have some, like, seven-year veteran quarterback, and this is all going to be awesome with the receivers. Well, that's going to depend on what happens with Zach Wilson. And that's going to be the big question. The, the skill position situation on this team is, like, night and day from – not just last year, but for years. And it's an exciting time to follow this team if you're a Jet fan. And it's going to take a couple of years before, if you're a big fantasy football guy, you're still not going to turn to the Jets because you don't know what you're getting out of Zach Wilson as a rookie. And that doesn't mean that you can't pluck a player or two on your fantasy team for depth reasons, you're going to be able to do that as long as Zach Wilson competes and, and, and plays well, which I expect him to, but it's going to take two, three years. And, and, and that's okay because you still have, what, that is why it's so important that this group is between 21 and 28. That's why it's so important that same age range, basically for the tight ends, the ones with upside earned in, especially, you know, he's the one and your boa if there's another guy. So by time Zach Wilson in year two, year three is a legitimate NFL starter that can be picked up by a fantasy team and maybe even start. Then all of a sudden you got all these guys, they're in their second year, they're in the third year, they're in their fourth year. And now you've got something really special. And, and this is what is exciting about following this team and really going over everything that is happening, especially with the skill positions, which we've covered so far. Now we're going to move on to the offensive line next. And that'll wrap it up for the offense. And uh, then it's off to the defense. We'll have three episodes, and then we'll wrap it up with special teams. So that's it for episode five, the wide receiver unit right here on Jets FM on the OFN's preview of the New York Jets 
2021 season. We'll see you next time.